again. I think it's about the 22nd. I didn't check. Uh, let's see. It's either the 21st or the 22nd. Let's see. Friday was the 20th. So today is the 21st. It's the 21st of August. And we're just about 15 hours into the day. Oh. And we have much to talk about. It seems to me as if uh, 2.33 o'clock is now our starting time in terms of getting up and getting, getting the day going. Uh, so that's... Where it was. I got up at around 2.30, uh, decanted the tea from the uh, from its uh, brewing position, socialists and so forth, these terms matter there because there was a sense of pretense that, that a label mattered, what you were mattered, and so these labels became convenient. Even though the labels do not necessarily define everybody, because not everybody is within the, well, standard categorizations. And this is what he talks about, this is you know, why, oh, you don't know what communism is, these people aren't communists, well, yes and no. They mean, you know, and this is it. He, he, why is he a Democrat? Because he just defined it himself. A large chunk of his views are left leaning. He's got no problem with them. But if it, but those left leaning views conflict with a large chunk of the things that he is more passionate about that he wants to see resolved. In other words, you know, the child predation. The problem is, is that if you could choose to have an amoral society with what they call uh, moral relativism, well, then you can't argue anything because you're now, well, moral relativism, the morality no longer matters. There's no, no longer a case of moral and immoral. And so there goes, there goes your entire argument. So he, he, in many cases, he's battling, and you can see this, that there is a, there's a confliction there. He's battling with himself, and this is the way it is with, with a number of, of the intellectual types, uh, where, no matter where they sit in the spectrum, in terms of the political spectrum. Uh, there's a lot of confliction there. Because if something doesn't make sense to them, then they, they wonder, well, why doesn't it make sense? There must be something wrong. And as they try to make more and more logical sense out of things, sometimes they get really lost and mixed up. And this is kind of what you're seeing. Uh, you know, he was sure and certain that, that Biden would have been gone by now. Oh, oh, Biden's not gone by now. What? Kamala Harris did such a bad job <laughs> at being vice president that they don't want. The, the, a lot of people don't want the, the powers that be. Don't want anything to do with it. So they're not willing to switch yet. So they're going to hang on to Biden. But the thing is, is that the view up there from, from from a large chunk of other views is that they're now stuck with Biden. It's not that they want Biden. They're stuck with Biden now. They, they, they can't do anything wrong about it. And so the United States is in, in, in a situation where it's caught in its own bind. But the thing is, you, you can see how he changes his positions. But every time he changes his position, he's very sure about it. And he knows the right way. Well, wait a minute here. 
two months ago you were saying something different. And so, you know, you recommended go, you know, go check out his Twitter, Twitter account. And I did. And I had been following him before, but his vile nation is gone now. He was listed as one of the QAnon. So his account was suspended. Uh, now he's doing Lionel Media. He's there, but even there, there's not much in terms of, you know, in terms of what he says on his, uh, on his show, his live broadcast, there really isn't anything much more. Uh, and I, I have a suspicion that, uh, I think a suspicion that this is what the, uh, uh LionelMedia.com is going to be like. It's going to be a lot more like that. I, I went on to something like, like, like Alex Jones and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's not that they don't have their points. They all do have their points. Uh, it's just what happens is that it's not the end all and be all. So, it looks like I got caught in a bit of a rain here. It looks, it looks like a little bit of a sun shower. But anyways, it doesn't really matter. I'll get a wet just a little bit. I'll get a little wet. Interesting watching Lionel, interesting looking at his Twitter account. And the analysis is, I, I feel though, the analysis is doing pretty well. You're able, to, you're able kind of to sort of figure out what he's about. And then he gets, because of, once you have that sense, then you can now start doing a tr what we call tracking. And you can start tracking events and how you use him as a litmus. And, and this is, again, a different type of sampling. As I said before, a lot of places, when you're talking about statistics and their sampling, will do something known as a vertical sampling. The vertical sampling only samples one particular type of area. It's a, and that's why it's called vertical. It's not spread across the spectrum. But there's another type called spectrum sampling. And this is actually no, known for in chemistry, in, uh, not chemistry, but in, uh, in physics, where you have spectrum analysis. And this is where in also physics you have error analysis. This is talking about you know data. Data isn't necessarily data until you've done the, your, your analysis on it properly, and you have to do an error analysis. Well, if error analysis is not known to a particular field then you're not going to get error analysis because it's simply not known. And so it's <laughs> sort of the same thing here with Lionel, is that, you know, we get to realize where he is in terms of his, his political spectrum. And because he's an independent, he's, he's sort of a con contrary. He sort of questions everything. That makes him, rather than being a vertical sample, he is a spectrum sample. So you can take other pundits and place other pundits up against them and sort of match the, the, the sort of the greater intellectual type of things. In other words, you can use him as a broad spectrum study of intellectuals. So it should be interesting over the next couple, of, uh, another couple of, uh, weeks and months. But I don't really think that uh, the United States knows where it's going. I think there's a lot of confusion, and this is sort of representative of what we see with Lionel. That there's a lot of confusion out there. Uh, there's a lot of hand wringing as what went wrong and how did it go so 
horribly wrong. He thinks that Trump can't come back. Well, that's not 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 a reality. This Trump was never predicted in the beginning. Now that after everything is over, in hindsight, he's oh yeah, yeah yeah they let him in. Well, not really, because the deep state, or what we call the deep state, they're doing this to him way before uh, he got elected. They ain't everything, the banning, the, 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 uh, the this and the that. All done beforehand. And then nothing ever changed. been kind of getting to me so but the heat is uh, nowhere near over just about March. The same thing kind of a worth the day. The coldest point during the day is you look just before sunrise. Then the earth begins to heat again. So you have this going on uh, daily, and then you also have it going on yearly on an annual basis. And the thing is, this is something that's observable. And going back into theory, you find this with with uh, uh, Planck's black body radiation. But you do not find it in the IPCC's, the IPCC, the International Panel on Climate Change. You don't see this uh, in their report at all. They're working on the 18th century model of meteorology. That's where climate change works. Bring it into uh, actual atmospheric physics, and all of a sudden this whole climate change theory doesn't work. The physics very simply isn't there. So basically what's happening is that we've been living now, that sort of explains the condition that we're in today, We've been living a fantasy in the fantasy world for a long time. We create these fantasies and advertise them as real, hoping that people will, 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 will pay for them. And that's what it's looking for. They're looking, for, they're looking to, to pay these different things. You know, you, you have a laboratory, you want someone to pay you your salary, and well, what do you need? You need government funding. And your government funding comes from these... Uh, on crises. You know, people are going to fund you more. If it's a crisis, then they're going to fund you. Which means you'll be able to buy, you know, pay for the house, pay for the boat, you know, your, your cottage, and all the other accessories and amenities you want for the rest of your life. Of course, this is not explained uh, in much of what's going on. Lionel certainly doesn't help at all. I mean, he's there, down the, uh, he's sitting there. But I think, again, he's, he's, he's I think it's the, 
everybody has their own kind of thing here. And this is kind of telling to see what ends what ends up happening with the with the elections and everything like that. It wasn't just the, the QAnons who were conspiracy theorists. Even the ones on the left uh, <laughs> were conspiracy theory, con, 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 conspiracy theorists because they believe in this whole Russia Gate thing. They don't understand they're being worked by both sides. That this whole conflict thing between the left and the right is not necessarily real. That there are other people controlling things, and that the left and right paradigms are convenient uh, existences. But what happens is that just because you can see outside the paradigms doesn't necessarily mean that the persons within the paradigm don't see it as real. And this is what I'm talking about perspective here. Line up considers themselves to be, uh, you know, fundamentally outside that right paradigm. But he's not sufficiently so that he's isolated from it. This is why he vacillates back and forth between one thing and the next. And I think that the people who listen to him, and, and even those who oppose him, I was looking at because he was going on his Twitter account. Not only do you see the people that he, he, he support him, but you see the, all of his detractors as well. These are sort of called Democrat left people who are still putting up uh, Russiagate memes with uh, Donald Trump as uh, Putin's puppet. Shout out that stuff has, has already been disproven. Um, but it's still going on. They're portraying the uh, J6 protesters as terrorists, which they aren't. And use this thing to say, oh, wow, this is a work. In other words, they throw the terms of conspiracy that they accuse the right of onto the right once again. They are the truth, they are the, 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 the uh, heroes, they're the warriors, the truth, and everybody else are conspiracy theorists. Yet, they don't really offer any proof, there's no real fundamental proof that they offer, other than sort of uh, heavily suggested words. <laughs> so they don't have a proof, they don't have proof of anything. But once again, it's sort of like this whole thing that you deal with with Lionel LeBron, because they're intellectuals as well. Yeah, trust me, I know. I know, because I've got a friend who, and, uh, and there's always some friend. And the thing is, you look at the history, you find this is exactly the same thing. This is why, this is why, you know, Trotsky, Stalin, and Lenin all started off as comrades. And then ended up killing each other, <laughs> with Stalin being the victor and the sort of the the the, the icon, if you will, of the, of the Bolshevik Revolution. And, and, and Lionel's kind of brought up this term because he doesn't. They don't consider Trotsky to be a true communist. And then this is what I call, I call them maybe the last Tro Trotskyites, right? Well, then there's also the Leninists, there's the Marxists. There are the Maoists, in terms of your common, communist identity. Then there's the, there's those who follow Che Guevara. There are the Cubans, the Cuban communists. And I, can, I guarantee you that there are multiple groups within there. And it's all founded on this whole basis of the word I know. Well, do you really? If if you really know and the, the, your knowledge is absolute, why isn't everyone on the same page with you? That's because there's different views of the truth. There is only one truth. But the thing is, 
people have uh, have a, a a perspective on it, and it's not all the same perspective. People can never see the entire truth; they only see part bits and pieces of it. And so they argue back and forth over what the truth is, insisting their perspective, their view, is the absolute truth. And then, of course, you have those who are willing to lie and what's so called bend the truth. And these people muddy the water, so to speak, so to speak, because now you don't know what the truth is because you have no, you don't want what everyone sort of learn about. Instead of fake news, you have disinformation. Well, they're bringing out disinformation. Well, who brings out disinformation? Well, the CIA does. We certainly saw a lot of it being bandied about. this whole COVID thing. And I think people say, well, well if this, if this is what, what brings up the attitude, well, who cares anyway? And then people get frustrated and give up. Because they don't know what the difference is. They, 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 they can't sit down and figure this stuff out. They don't know what to believe. But then I get a large share of these people aren't too, inter too interested in finding out what the truth is. They're spending most of their time watching sports on TV. You know, if you'd rather be doing something else and, you know, being leisurely, then you're not going to be doing research. <laughs> and you're not going to know. Yes, the level of depth of research that you're willing to do that really determines your level of knowledge in terms of how deep you know what something is or what something isn't. But even then, there's no guarantee, there is no, uh, and this is what I'm trying to say, I'm kind of tripping over my words here, there is no absolute truth. You will never achieve the absolute knowledge of everything, so your knowledge will always be an approximate. 